Welcome to another episode, everyone. Today we're dealing with the EVAP canister purge solenoid valve. Let me show you where it's located on this vehicle. If we take a look, whoops, at the engine bay, and let me just shine on a light. Right here we have a matte barrel switch, and directly behind it, which happens to be this guy right here, this is where the solenoid valve lives. So if you are doing this on an older Nissan Maxima, just look right here, this is your solenoid, the matte barrel solenoid valve, and then right behind it is where the uh, EVAP solenoid valve that we'll test today is. Now I've said this in previous videos, if you're not exactly sure where the valve lives on your vehicle, just do a Google image search, and very often you can really pick up images very, very quickly showing where the valve lives on your vehicle. So let's go ahead and run some tests. I'll show you exactly how you can verify if this valve is working correctly. Now this solenoid valve works in conjunction with this guy up here. This is the EVAP canister purge control valve. And I know on your vehicle it does get confusing because there are a lot of EVAP or evaporative emission components. So we'll have to check this as well, but let's just check the obvious. Let's make sure that this uh, solenoid valve is working correctly. The way to do that is we'll set up a power source and we should hear the plunger in here move back and forth. So let's go ahead and do that. And I know the view here isn't very good. The location of this solenoid valve is uh, its really not very accessible. But what you have here is a harness connector on the end where my thumb is. Let me see. Right here is a tag. You push down on it. You can hear it. And then pull back on the body here. And you may need two hands to do this because it really is cramped in here. But there we go. Okay. So what I've done is I've removed the rubber hose that was obstructing the view just so we have a, a better look of what's going on here. And as you can see, I have two wires and the wires have an alligator type end, as you can see. So what I'm doing is I'm applying 12 volts worth of power to this solenoid valve and we should hear the valve move back and forth. So one connection is going to the left prong. Inside this connector you have two prongs. So this red wire is going to the left prong and I'll attach the negative or the black wire to the right prong. It doesn't matter which one you do to be honest. The main thing is when you do this, it's a little slippery with these uh, rubber boots. Let me just get it on here and I'll slip the, the boot over it. The main thing is when you do this test, really the, the positive lead should have a fuse in it. Just in case you cross the wires, the fuse will blow and you won't uh, really make any sparks or, or uh, fire hazard. But be very careful when you do this because you don't want to cross the leads, obviously. But uh, in this case, I'm just fitting the sleeve over the end inside that valve. And as you can see, the red wire goes to positive and then we'll touch the black to negative. We should hear the valve move back and forth, and we do. Let me come in for a close-up so you guys can hear this just in case. So as you can clearly hear, the valve is working correctly. Now if the solenoid valve in your case is not making any noise when you do this, you've quickly pinpointed the problem. You need to replace the valve. But let's say for example that it is working correctly, but you still have a trouble code 443. That's just one thing to cross off the list. Now let's look at the next thing. Let's verify that power is getting to this solenoid valve. So in other words, if you have a break in one of these wires, then this guy won't work correctly because it's not getting power. So I'll show you how you can test this. We'll need a multimeter to test this using a uh, volt setting. So here we have the multimeter. We want the volt setting. Now if you don't have a multimeter, you can pick them up really anywhere. Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, your auto parts supplier, they all have them. Now what you want to do is you have two leads, a red and a black wire. You take the red, in this case we need to touch terminal number two, which is this guy on the right, and then you have a black wire. Black wire goes to ground, okay? Ground is any good metal point. You can quickly just use the negative terminal on the battery as well. Some people don't like to do that, again, because if there, if there isn't a built-in fuse, but uh, it will work without a doubt. If you just quickly want to get a good ground, use the negative terminal on the battery. 
then what we want to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. You're not going to crank or start the car, just turn the ignition key to the on position. Now what we want to see here is 12 volts worth of supply. So again, terminal number two, which is this guy, that's number one, that's number two. So if we touch number two, we should have a reading. It's a little hard with one hand. Let me see if I can get this, otherwise uh, I'll have to put the camera down. But let's just see. And there we go. So we have 12.1 volts, which is battery voltage going to this connection. So this verifies that power is getting to the harness connector. If you're not getting a reading here, check the wires. Usually they fray or melt. Uh, maybe if your car has been sitting for a while, you have uh, mice eating at it. But as you can see, you want to have a good, solid uh, connection. Now, if everything turns up okay in your vehicle, we got to check the next thing. Now, if those two tests come out great, you have no problems with the solenoid valve or the harness connector, just plug everything back up. Of course, I have the vacuum line connected once again. And what we need to do is start the car. You want to make sure that the car is warmed up. And then we'll disconnect this vacuum line and we should have vacuum uh, if we raise the RPMs to around 2000. Now, if you don't have anyone to help you with this, here's the uh, your throttle control. You can just do it manually right from here. So we'll rev the motor a little bit like so. And we should have a little bit of vacuum coming from this line. So we'll rev the motor and we should have a vacuum here. And we sure do. If you take a look at my glove, it's being sucked into this rubber tube. Take a look. So this verifies that this vacuum hose is working correctly. Now, if you're not getting a vacuum when you do that test, just check the, uh, the vacuum tubing of course, you also have some other guys right here, and there's another line right here. So in other words, you want to make sure that there are no breaks in any of these lines. A lot of times what I'll do, if I come across a car that has an EVAP code, I just replace all of the rubber hoses because you can go to your local auto parts supplier, get a couple feet of hosing uh, relatively, in, relatively inexpensively, and you can just cut the size and replace the hosing. But that's the main thing. You just want to check these hoses for cuts now, if you've like done all of those tests and you still have a problem, everything has uh, checked out okay so far, there are two other things you can check. The first thing is this control valve right here. I'll have a separate link showing on how you can remove and test this control valve. If you have a leak in the diaphragm or, or maybe one of these rubber hosings, then it can give you a trouble code, in this case 443, and some other ones also, in fact. The other thing is... There's a uh, pressure valve in the rear of the vehicle, and it's actually near the EVAP canister. I'll have a separate link for that as well. I do have a video showing on how you can test the pressure sensor, but it's hooked up to another video. Uh, in the meantime, I'll include that link below. It's for uh, code P 1445, which is the EVAP control volume control valve. Uh, this guy right here. This is the volume control valve. So that pressure sensor also works with this guy. And like I said earlier, the EVAP system, there are so many components that works with this entire system. So if one thing goes, it can affect everything else. So you need to check every little thing to really figure out what's going on. Uh, so in the meantime, do this test or run these different tests to see exactly where the problem is. But once you check every single thing, you'll really pinpoint where the problem is.